at the Aspen Institute. Uh, my name is Eric Stegman. I'm the executive director of the Center for Native American Youth here at Aspen. My family's from the Carry the Kettle Nakota First Nation up in Saskatchewan, and my mom grew up on the Blackfeet Reservation um, in Montana. And today is really a special day for us. This is a celebration and a culmination of a really, really uh, hardworking year um, to build an entirely new kind of platform uh, for youth leaders in this country. And I'm really excited that you're here to um, join us to see uh, what we've been doing over the last many months. And really, um, it's the culmination of many, many years um, in the making. So we've got a lot to share with you today. Um, but to start us off in a good way, I'm going to ask one of our youth leaders, Kyra Antone, um, to come join us and, um, and share a blessing with us. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Kyra Antone. Um, so I'm going to be singing a song uh, in the Otham language and it's just, um, it's a creation song and it will just, it just starts off like with blessing where we're at. Um. Ami banana mai nari to yo makai yo mavu jan yo ha to dam ha nam ha nyari ha Ami banana mai nari va ki vu jan yo ha Ta sha to no rim ha ka cho kari va ki mumuko Ami banana mai nari va ki vu jan yo ha Ta ja to no rim ha ka cho kari va ki mumuko Jav te na to Jav te na to Ami banana mai nari to yo makayam ma vu jan yo ha Javatena to dam ha nam ha nyari ha Ami vanana mai nari va ki vu jan yo ha Ta ja to no rim ha ka cha kari va ki mumuko Ami vanana mai nari va ki vu jan yo ha Ta ja to no rim Ka cha kari va ki mumuko Java te na to Java te na to Ami vanana mai nari to yo makayam Ma vu jan yo ha Java te na to dam ha nam ha nyari ha Ami vanana mai nari va ki vu jan yo Ta ja to no rim ha ka cha kari va ki mumuko Ami vanana mai nari va ki vu jan yo ha Ta ja to no rim ha ka cha kari va ki mumuko Java te na to Java te na to Ami vanana mai nari to hi yo makayam ma vu jan yo ha Java te na to dam ha nam ha nyari ha Ami vanana mai nari va ki vu jan yo ha Ta ja to no rim ha ka cha kari va ki mumuko Ami vanana mai nari va ki vu jan yo ha Ta ja to no rim ha ka cha kari va ki mumuko Dimachi Thank you, Kara, for starting us in such a good way. Um, and it really gave us a lot to reflect on a lot of the kinds of um, messages and, uh, of uh, change and civic action that you're going to be hearing about today. So I'm excited to get this started. Um, 
So just to tell you a little bit about how I came into this program is you're going to be hearing a lot about the story that is Fresh Tracks and um, what a lot of different people, partners, and programs um, have come together to build here today. And I remember um, Steve Patrick, who heads our Forum on Community Solutions here at the Aspen Institute, uh, connected me with a guy named Martin LeBlanc for breakfast um, about a little over a year ago now. And he told me about this program. You're going to hear more about it. But I had never heard of a program that actually brought Native youth together with youth from other communities to really focus on what they can do to build power together across cultures and really relying on nature as a platform for organizing and civic action. And that's really what Fresh Tracks is. Um, for us, uh, coming from an indigenous worldview, this is how we've always approached um, our lands and our waterways. But to be able to really reach out across communities, geographies, and boundaries um, as young leaders and do this together was really exciting to me. I thought this was something that a lot of the youth who work through our programs at CNAY could really benefit. I think everyone is a teacher and everyone is a learner in this program, and you're going to hear a lot more about that. So. Um, I'm not going to say much about it because we've got a lot of other um, messengers who are going to share more about this project with you. Um, but I did want to, first of all, thank the um, organizations that really made this uh, reality and what we have here today. Um, first of all, our funders, um, REI, who's here today, Mark Bereka, Casey Family Programs, the Walmart Foundation, and Newman's Own Foundation. Um, this is the next stage of a, a project that started as a pilot, but those funders are what made this very busy year a reality for us, and you're going to hear a lot about it. I also want to give a very heartfelt thanks to the, ch the staff of the Children in Nature Network and their executive director, Sarah Milligan Toffler, who's here with us today, and definitely my team um, as well. They have been working nonstop around the clock for this program. We had an, a summer of trainings where we were running a training a month with our, our partners at Children in Nature Network. Um, and they are really all pulled together to make this uh, event a reality today, too. So um, lots of gratitude for that. So it's my pleasure to introduce someone who has been a really Im important and inspiring leader um, for Aspen being a platform for this program, and that's Dan Porterfield. I actually just got back from a really fun uh, uh, day in Seattle, where I'm from, um, with Dan, uh, meeting with a lot of our partners out there and with our programs. And it was just really inspiring for me to hear why Dan comes to this work. I remember the very first day he started, I wasn't even here. My um, associate director, Nikki Petrie, was meeting with a bunch of um, students from the Native American Community Academy in New Mexico. And I just get this text message where Dan's up there on the roof on his very first day talking to all these students about education on our, our roof deck upstairs. Um, so from day one, he wanted to break into one of our meetings, learn about what we were doing, and really hear from those young leaders. And that's been every day since he started here, and we're really, really um, inspired to have him as our new president and CEO here. So I'd like to introduce Dan Porterfield. Uh, thank you, Eric, for that lovely introduction. And it's great to be here uh, and to see all of you and to have met uh, a little while ago, uh, Devin and Anthony uh, and Kara uh, uh, and Kara. Um, and uh, it's interesting, whenever you get around Eric, he introduces you to fantastic young people that are really making a difference. And it's always a partnership of the staff of the Center for Native American Youth and young people to try to create together something that neither generation possibly could make alone. Um, it wasn't too long ago that I met this extraordinary young guy, I wish he was here to meet all of you, his name is Trenton, um, who came here and was on a panel like the one you'll be on, and he spoke um, about coming of age and stepping into his leadership and the pride of his community and how he hoped he could be a voice for empowerment of Native youth and of all youth. And he had this, this, this line he said, as he was speaking, it was haunting. I never, I just, you know, well, no pressure. Uh, it was amazing. He said, I used to think that not voting was an act of rebellion. Now I believe it's an act of surrender. And I just thought the insight that he had come to through his participating in the program as a young leader um, activated his desire to be a difference maker in society and to make sure that he's at the table 
there's always a table where decisions get made. One of my great uh, friends and young mentees uh, named Don L. Bailey, who I taught at my former school, Franklin and Marshall, would always say, um, he's a survivor of Katrina. He lived in Houston with his mom for years and finally got back to New Orleans. Um, he always said, there's going to be a table. There's always a table. If I'm not at the table, somebody else is going to be at the table. But there's always a table. And he was going to be at that table. And that's what you're doing, putting yourselves in a position to be at the table. And I really think that part of being at the table as young people is understanding other young people and learning uh, how to find unity in difference and how to understand the diversity of cultural backgrounds among the young and also to understand the commonalities, the similarities, how to maybe develop together agendas that can make a difference for society, for your generation, for society. Um, maybe even be a model for older people about what it means to build relationships that transcend the supposed divides of identity while respecting the beauties and particularity of every culture. That's what I think you're modeling for us today. And thank you. Um, and the Center for Native American Youth in this forum um, really take, take inspiration from you, from what you're doing. And it makes people like me want to go out and do more, to find more resources, to invest more in young people, and also to learn myself. What are the, some of the ideas that um, are not self-evident to me, I haven't learned before, but I can learn by being in relationship with the young. The older and the younger are always in relationship. Um, and thank you for taking the time to do this. You know, th these four kids, they're all college students. They're also working. Um, and they're also developing yourselves in relation to one another. Uh, sometimes people use this terminology of mind, body, spirit, which I think is really important. We have, we're, we're, we're more than just one thing. We're, we're, we're a mind, we're a consciousness, we're a sensibility. But we're also a physical entity. Um, we're a body. Uh, or a spirit or a soul, pick the word you want to use for that, that captures our relationship with the transcendent. What they don't always say is something else that we also are too, which is citizen. Mind, body, spirit, citizen. Because by definition, we are in relation to one another. As Dr. King said, I can only be what I am to be if you are what you are to be. And you can only be what you're called to be if I am what I am called to be. And that notion that we're mind, body, spirit, citizen, is one that we sometimes forget in our society. We forget the radical interdependence, the radical mutuality that comes with being a human being uh, on the planet Earth. Um, in fact, taking stock of the fact that there is something called a planet Earth uh, and that there's grandeur in the world around us is something we forget. And sometimes you take stock of that grandeur in the Earth, the natural world, it can remind you to hold hands human to human, so that we can protect each other and protect our planet even better. We learn that in dialogue with one another. Um, so for me, being here with you today is a chance to say thank you to you, as a chance to uh, pour a little bit of water back in my own reservoir, in my own spirit and soul, so that I can remind myself how powerfully important it is to take the risk and spend the time to reach out and learn in a cross-cultural way, and how building bonds of dialogue, friendship, understanding can lead us to be even more fully alive to the community we're from and to the humanity that we share. And I'm positive that if those of us that are a little bit older than you can really absorb the lessons of how you've chosen to spend your time, we can do better in our work partnering with young people to make sure that we build a world in which all of us are able to flourish as human beings. Um, so thank you. Thank you for spending your time with us, for being part of Fresh Tracks, for all that support Fresh Tracks, the Center for Native American Youth. Thank you so much uh, for believing in the power of the young and in how much it matters that we welcome people at the earliest stage of their lives and their careers to the platform so that your voice your ideas, your presence can animate the national conversation about who we are as a people. So thank you. With that, I'd like to bring to the mic um, 
a leader whose name I've heard many times and had a chance to meet for the first time today, which I can't believe, Michael Smith from the Obama Foundation, executive director of My Brother's Keeper, works with the president to think about empowering young people. Um, and the Obama Foundation is going to do extraordinary work, extraordinary work for years to come, investing in young people and building a good society. And hopefully one day, the four of you will be working either here at the Aspen Institute or across the street <laughs> at the Obama <laughs> Foundation. So thank you. Michael, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody feeling? So in Obama world, when we say, how are you feeling, the response is fired up. I know it's gray outside, but how's everybody feeling? I thought so. Uh, it's, it's good to be here. It's good to finally meet Dan. I've had the great privilege to work with the Aspen Institute over many years, um, uh, from everything from economic development in the Middle East to civic engagement strategies here in the United States of America. Uh, good things happen here at the Aspen Institute and why it's so wonderful that CNE and Fresh Tracks are, are now here uh, and we can, I feel like we've got our little Justice League, our Hall of, of Justice across the street from each other, and we're gonna, we're gonna do some really great work together with all of you. Um, so I wanna say greetings and gratitude on behalf of the 44th President of the United States, Barack Obama. Um, he sends his best. Um, I wanna let you know that he and Mrs. Obama continue to be dedicated to this work. Um, barely took a minute after the, the presidency was over. Um, I think some of us were hoping that he would take more time off so that we could take a little bit more time off. Uh, but really, I'm telling you, I think it was like six weeks. You saw the pictures of him with like Richard Branson parasailing or something like that. But he, he did not take much time. Uh, right at the end of the administration, he called me in the office, said, I'm serious about this work. You need to stay on board and keep leading it and moving it forward. Um, and then he took a few weeks off and then was back in the office and say, let's do it. Let's change the world. Um, and the other thing that he said is, you know, we no longer have to think about life cycle issues on a political cycle. Um, and so Barack and Michelle Obama remain committed to this work for the rest of their lives and are going to be behind uh, the great work that, that you've been doing um, every step of the way. Um, my connection to this work is, is through My Brother's Keeper. Um, President Obama launched My Brother's Keeper back in 2014 uh, in the White House, and it was in the aftermath of the tragic killing of Trayvon Martin um, and the even po po possibly more shocking verdict um, in that trial. Um, and some of you may remember President Obama uh, surprised the press briefing room. Uh, it's one of those things where the press corps is not ready for him to come in, or they're not expecting him, and he walks in through the side door, and they all kind of fall over themselves standing up uh, when the president comes in. Uh, and, and he talked honestly um, about this issue, trying to explain to America why so many black and brown families were feeling anger and angst in the aftermath of this verdict. Uh, and he said a lot of different things. He talked honestly about issues of race. Um, he said, you know, something along the lines of, before I was senator, I know what it was like to walk to a car door and hear the door locks. I know what it's like to get on an elevator and have someone clutch their purse. Um, he said, 30 years ago, Trayvon could have been me. He said, Trayvon could be my son. Um, and he said, there's got to be more that we can do to make sure young men of color in this country know that their country cares about them and is willing to invest in them uh, because we put our money where our heart is. Uh, and so fast forward about six months later in the East Room of the White House, President Obama, uh, surrounded by young men of color, launched the My Brother's Keeper Initiative uh, to really tackle uh, these really shocking disparities and opportunity that boys and young men of color face and to make sure all young people could reach their full potential. Uh, and there was lots of great work that happened in that space. Um, but one of, the, one of the cool things was we got to partner with all sorts of people. Um, and when the president went on his trip to Alaska, he came back and he met with some of his advisors, um, including Christy, who was the head of CEQ at that time, um, and my boss, Broderick Johnson, in the White House, who was the president's cabinet secretary, he said, man, Alaska was extraordinary. It was such a transformative, powerful experience. Um, why don't we do more of that with older kids? Why don't we do more of that with underserved kids? It must be transformative. The Obama administration had been spending so much time making sure that fourth graders were getting into the national parks. And the president said, we, we, we should be able to do more. So Christie and Broderick and others went back. And when the president of the United States tells you something, 
you do it. <laughs> uh, and we were able to find a group of partners, some of them that are still represented in this room today from Children and uh, Nature Network and Campion and Islandwood and REI and many others. And they said, we love this idea. Um, and they put together a model for Fresh Tracks. Uh, and we got to see this incredible movement of young people building bridges, learning and growing together um, that is continuing to thrive today. And we've been so excited uh, to bring the My Brother's Keeper family uh, to bear. And I, I think the golden child of the My Brother's Keeper family has to be the great city of Compton, um, who's represented here today by Dr. Sharani Little, um, who was there from the beginning and said, I got a lot on my plate, but I'm ready to do this, and jumped in right away with Mayor um, Asia Brown and Compton. And so we've just been happy to see those, those, those bridges uh, continue to come together. Um, you know, I'm one of the kids, or I'm not one of the kids. I am getting older and older, and my team reminds me every day with references. Like, I'll say, you know, let's have a Donahue moment. And they're like, what? What is that? Anyone Donahue? Anyway, so, you know, I was one of the kids that we're, we're all trying to work on behalf of. My parents had me when they were both 16 years old. I grew up in Springfield, Massachusetts. We didn't have a whole lot of money. We didn't have a whole lot of stuff. Um, but because of people like you that cared, that built bridges, um, because of my Boys and Girls Club, because of my Boys and Girls Club that had an overnight camp in Brimfield, Massachusetts, I was able to have some of these transformative spirit experiences. And I know the only reason I'm here today um, is because of folks like you that put their money, their time where their hearts is, um, and made a way for kids like me. So I want to say thank you. Um, from the bottom of my heart, thank you to Eric and Martin and everybody else uh, who's continuing this work uh, for being there for our young people. I'll, I'll close with a quick thing. When we launched My Brother's Keeper um, Alliance in the Bronx, New York at Lehman College in 2015, um, the president uh, was giving his speech and then he went off script. And it's one of those things, staff is following his prepared remarks and it's like, oh, oh, where, where is he? He's kind of going off. And he said, you know, we had this round table beforehand with a group of young people. Um, and one of the young people that we talked to, Malachi, who is now on my board, he's one of my bosses, um, said to me, when I asked him, what do you need? He said, what about love? Um, he talked about how his father hadn't been there for him. And he's like, I know I'm supposed to be strong, Mr. President. You didn't have your dad. What about love? That's what I need. And I remember sitting in that room and I was floored and like, Mr. President, good luck with that, that comment. And it was a, it was a great exchange. Um, but he said, I want to talk to Malachi and I want to talk to all the young people just like you. And he said, I want you to know that you matter. The President of the United States is telling you that you matter. He said, there's nothing, not a single thing that's more important to the future of America than whether or not you and young people like you can achieve their dreams. America's future, DC's future, is dependent on these young people that are sitting right there. We will not succeed if they don't succeed. So I'm happy to be a part of this family with all of you to make sure that they can thrive and they can achieve their dreams and so that we can all thrive together. Thanks for your good work. Thanks for letting me be here today. Thanks so much, Michael. Um, we, we love, I, I remember one of the first experiences I had with uh, the actual Fresh Tracks program is when we did our last train the trainer and Michael came to speak to our, our trainers um, down at the um, MLK Memorial and you can see why we love having him up here because he's, he's got a lot of energy. And, <laughs> Um, also, anytime uh, President Obama, please thank him. But if he wants to pop over here across the street to come visit, doors are always open. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So um, you know, I'm really excited because today we are going to actually debut our video, so we can show you what Fresh Tracks is all about and what we've been doing for the last many months. But I want to point you to what one of the things I'm most proud of. I think first of all, it's the youth leaders who've been involved, but the other part is the back year program. And that's the partnerships that we have. I think Michael just explained a, a really important and critical piece of this from the very beginning with MBK. Um, but it's an out-of-the-box group of partners. And I think this is, if we're going to change something in this country about our civic future, we've got to think really differently about the kinds of platforms we're building, the kinds of opportunities we're building for our young people, and give them the opportunities they deserve um, to think creatively about how we're going to transform this very divided country. And that's really what this program's about. Um, I think a lot of times, especially for those of us who are working in DC on a regular basis, you know, we run around in our environmental and conservation circles, our native circles, our community of color circles, social justice or youth, you name it. 
Fresh Tracks very intentionally tries to bring all of that together, and we're really seeing the results because after just running this program for the last year through CNAY, I am just amazed at the things I overhear in these trainings about what young people are learning about each other's communities and cultures. And that's what's going to overcome what we're all seeing today and what's um, you know, really dividing our country. I want to give a real special thanks to um, Children in Nature Network, who is the, the, our core partner who really operates this program, um, because it's a lot uh, you know, coming from someone who runs a program, it's a lot to kind of challenge your own silos with your colleagues. Um, and when we first put this together, you know, people are like, well, you know, but that's, that's a, a, an organization that's dedicated to connecting kids with nature. And you're a native organization. Why would you come together? And we're really seeing the results here, and I'm excited for you to hear about why that really matters. I also really want to thank REI, who was part of that. Um, that original vision from the very beginning. Um, I think I can probably speak for Mark, who's here from REI, but it's probably pretty challenging to do that in your sector as a, as a retailer in a co-op, too. You know, what are, what are you doing supporting these kinds of programs? It takes real vision. So this is really a coming together of vision of a lot of partners, including our other internal partners like Opportunity Youth Forum, who's been an amazing um, recruitment partner for us, Opportunity Youth United. We've got a lot of you in the house, too. <laughs> um, so I'm just excited for you to see the full energy and breadth of these partnerships. And this is only the beginning. We want to continue to grow these kinds of partnerships because that's what's really going to help change some of these um, civic pathways that we um, want to hear about. So without um, any more ado, um, I'm going to um, introduce the uh, Fresh Tracks video. So just as a little background, um, like I said, we've been hard at work between two organizations running a training every single month um, during the summer. Um, and now we're in our community activation phase with our youth leaders, who you'll be hearing from right after this. But this will give you a good sense of what this program is all about, who's involved, um, and some of the amazingly beautiful places that we get to organize in. So please roll the video. on a range of different issues. And we found that these young people are really, really wanting to learn from each other. So Fresh Tracks is really helping establish a new model and tool for these young people to come together in a really intentional way to learn not just about one another's diverse cultures, but to also really think very differently about the way that they're going to build power and take action on the issues that matter to them. So at the beginning of 2018, we wanted to bring the Fresh Tracks experience to as many young people across the country as possible. Sure. Scoot forward or? The beginning. in a really interesting time right now. There's youth movements exploding all over the country on a range of different issues. And we found that these young people are really, really wanting to learn from each other. So Fresh Tracks is really helping establish a new model and tool for these young people to come together in a really intentional way to learn not just about one another's diverse cultures, but to also really think very differently about the way that they're going to build power and take action on the issues that matter to them. So at the beginning of 2018, we wanted to bring the Fresh Tracks experience to as many young people across the country as possible. And we felt the best way to do that was to bring it to different regions across the country. We've been to the Northeast, we've been out to the Pacific Coast, we've been to the Intermountain West, and we've been to the Midwest. Early on when we were putting Fresh Tracks together, we wanted to make sure that collective impact and strategic partnerships were a key component of that because we know that no one person or no one organization can carry and address the systems of inequity that we need to address through this initiative. 
So FreshTrack supports the mission of CNAY because we're building community, we're building leaders, and we're igniting this fire that they're going to carry with them even after they leave this FreshTrack expedition. When we look at some of the core objectives, cultural excellence, leadership development, as well as civic engagement, what we are finding in some of our preliminary uh, evaluation understandings is that they are not only understanding their own leadership style, they are also understanding the value of learning about others' leadership style because that leads directly to the ability to collaborate effectively. I feel that uh, Fast Tracks for me, honestly, it, it just kind of did the final shaping on myself. Uh, I'm a good motivator. I know how to listen to people. I know how to guide people, but just being here and, and d hearing different stories from different people, uh, it just kind of helped me to become more compassionate, more understanding. I've been taught some great leadership qualities. And today I had the opportunity to run the leadership IQ session as a trainer. It was beautiful. There's no better feeling than being able to pass on what I learned to other individuals who have the same passion that I do. The most interesting thing about sharing my culture is that I seen that we're all the same. I shared my culture with other cultures and realized there's so many things that we connect to. There's more similarities than there are differences. And it was a great opportunity for me to connect with people who I would have never even spoken to passing by on the street. I'm really surprised how much culture plays an impact in our lives. Right? Um, I'm meeting all these African people and they're from native tribal groups and I'm just like, wow, like that means that much to you and I want to understand why that is. And I've been learning so much about, about their cultures that it reminds me of my own. It's definitely opened my eyes to know that I'm not alone and that, you know, there are people to reach out to and talk to about things that, you know, we struggle with. Civic engagement for me is providing an opportunity for people to voice what their needs are for their community. And I think that one of the beauties of Fresh Tracks and of this space is that we are a whole group of people that are sharing their experiences and how they're engaged in the community and recognizing that they're already leaders in the community. Fresh Tracks is, is something that needs to happen more everywhere in the world, especially in the U.S. A program or organization who care about young people who want to make a difference and give them the opportunity to learn more skills to make, go make a difference in their communities. There isn't enough things or programs like this to help them shine their light. It's not easy to have these conversations. It's not easy to say, well, this is what's wrong with my community. How are we going to fix it? Because usually we look at things through a lens, right? We say, oh, well, this is what's good about my community. We try to sell our community to other people. And this group is great in saying, well, this is what's wrong with my community. This is how we're going to fix it. There are a lot of leadership programs that are out there. There are a lot of outdoor programs that exist. I think the idea of creating a network or creating change and uh, building a community carries along with it an investment of time and energy that really supports uh, leaders becoming better leaders or becoming better versions of themselves. And you guys are creating this community that will allow people to lift them up and to become change agents using the outdoors as a platform to create social change um, and healthier people, places, and a planet, hopefully. I love that Fresh Tracks unites everyone back into nature because this is a free resource that we have. It's nature. It doesn't cost anything to come out, and it really bonds everyone. You come out, you forget your technology, you forget about the drama that you may be facing, you forget about your stresses. Nature is good medicine, and it's free medicine. I like to help address higher education. This is the revolution. This is the things that are going to spark a movement that's going to change the world. We're the next generation. We're the ones to do it. Just being able to, to you know, get back to my community and also not be looked at as a gangbanger, not be looked at as somebody who took away from the community. Within myself, I work to raise awareness about missing and murdered indigenous women. I really want to have a bigger impact on my community. We'll bring everybody out especially if I had like the right tools and people with connections. What I see as a, a community need um, where I'm currently living in San Diego is uh, access to the outdoors. I feel like it's going to be so much easier to make change because of being here. It's not just my community, it's everybody. We all have to, as a people, help each other out because we are people of the land. So we have to help each other, respect each other, value each other, and uh, be open to people, have compassion, um, 
for others. We don't want this fire to go out because we have to do better for our communities and we have to do better for our people. If you are willing to take action in your community for a positive impact, if you are willing to stand in action with us to do that, then you are part of our family because family to me is defined by those who stand in action with you. Real change takes time, real change takes courage, real change takes skills, and real change takes a family to pull it together. <laughs> His lach lach, his squeezeway Nikki Petri, his jinte squeezeway quelle, chin chits umch, chin nune, um, chin chits yeque, Kara Anton. Hello, everybody. My name is Nikki Petri. My Indian name is Meadowlark. I'm the associate director at the Center for Native American Youth. I greet you all with a warm heart and a very, uh, a happy heart and a really warm handshake. Um, I'm a mom, first and foremost, and um, just really proud to be here today. And um, so I want to kick it over to Juan to introduce himself as well. Que ole familia. Roughly translated, translated, that means what's up, family. Uh, so welcome, my name is Juan Martinez, Vice President of Strategic Partnerships with the Children and Nature Network and one of the co-founders of Fresh Tracks. Uh, can't thank you all enough for coming out and spending some of your time with us. Uh, but uh, kicking it off to the most, uh, the highlight of the day, I think, it's been a great, uh, exciting day and year, but uh, the, these young leaders are really the highlight of, of why we're here. So with that, uh, I'll kick it off to Nikki for the first round of questions and, and a panel discussion. Yeah, so before we do that, I'd love to go down the line and have you all introduce yourselves. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Devin Edwards. I was born and raised in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm 24 years old. I'm a legislative aide. I'm currently part-time in college, uh, black and Puerto Rican. Um, lived in the inner city my whole life, and fresh tracks is a blessing to me. My name is Karina Cisneros. I am a first-generation college student in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I work for Our Community's Children, which is a public-private partnership between the city of Grand Rapids and Grand Rapids Public Schools. I was a fresh tracks participant in Train the Trainer Summit in 2017, and I was a a trainer in two out of the four. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Anthony Tamez. I'm West Pacific First Nations Cree in Chichangu Lakota. Um, I'm a former champion for change for the Center for Native American Youth, part of their 2019 uh, cohort. Um, I'm also the co-president of my youth council back home, Shy Nations Youth Council, uh, as well as an intern uh, for my alderman, Alderman Carlos Ramirez Rosa, um, and a college student. I slafla has a sinquit, Kara Kwe squeeze, Stacy Quest, Squid Square Hanuna, Albert Quest, Squid Square Tintipa. Hello, everyone. My name is Kara Anton. My Indian name is Kioho, which uh, translates to rainbow. And I'm Coraline Anton Awesome, uh, the daughter of Stacy Parr and the late Albert Anton. I am a senior at Washington State University, majoring in digital technology and culture while minoring in fine arts and comparative ethnic studies. I am currently the president of the Native American Women's Association on campus and a um, student uh, advisor for the advisory board um, for the Elson S. Floyd Cultural um, Center at Washington State University, where I also work as a um, employee. <laughs> <laughs> a really important employee. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you each come from different communities, cultures, and backgrounds, and somehow all come together for Fresh Tracks. So that's really important, but can you explain, and this is just for anybody, what you have learned in these cross-cultural connections? I guess I'll kick it off and say, um, for me, this has just been eye-opening. Um, it's you no know, barrier-breaking and life-changing. Uh, you know, I'm an inner city youth. Inner city, the other term is hood. Um, so I'm born and raised in the hood, you know, I've never seen bears, I've never seen wildlife, 
Um, I'd never seen deers. Um, Fresh Tracks has presented the, presented me with that opportunity. It's brought me to Aspen. It's brought me to um, face to face with bears. Actually, <laughs> um, it's brought me face to face with this. Um, and in doing so, that that's you know broadened my spectrum on life. It's connected me with Native American you know youth that I've never been connected with. Um, there's a whole different world out there that I've never known about. But when Fresh Strikes came around, it's, it's brought in that spectrum for me. I am the complete opposite of, of Devin. I live in the country. Yep. <laughs> I have chickens. I see <laughs> deers all the time. Um, but when I met Devin, he didn't know that. And I was like, OK, Devin, they're more scared of us <laughs> than we are of them. And I think just learning so much, being educated with different cultures. I live in, like I said, the country. so. It was more of a Caucasian neighborhood. There were some Latinos, but not much. And being educated in with different cultures, such as uh, the different tribes, and just learning about so many tribes and so many more that I need to learn. Um, it's such a wonderful opportunity, taking account how they love their culture and how much I need to be more um, connected with my culture. Because I, I mean, I wasn't born in Mexico. I'm Mexican and I don't know everything. And my mom tries to teach me as much as possible, but it just makes you realize how much you may take for granted. And just, just being able to educate others as well. Taking all of what that I learn and taking it back to my community and making sure I'm teaching the correct information. Uh, I think for me it was um, building up my uh, personal relationships with people across the country um, because we are, we're all coming from totally different areas, uh, different regions in the country. Um, and just sharing a lot of the work that uh, me and my youth council are doing back at home with people uh, that are doing that's doing similar work um, to what we're doing and kind of comparing uh, how we're tackling on those issues. Um, and it's you see the differences and it's totally different how someone's uh, tackling voting rights in California than in Chicago. Um, like what can we do together? Uh, you know, to tackle the same issues. Um, but it's also uh, being able to share my culture um, unapologetically, being both Native and Black, um, and being able to express that in a space uh, that's safe for me to do so uh, is also, uh, uh, for me, it's very powerful. Um, and that's also very powerful uh, for other people as well. And it's um, it gets to a point where it gets emotional at some times because to share your culture with somebody, um, especially for Native people, uh, f for us there becomes a line, right? There, there's that space where uh, we don't want to share too much because it's all, it has been taken away from us uh, in the past, and you know uh, we don't want that to happen again. But it's also we have to use these these moments like this to educate people uh, about who we are and why we're doing the work we're doing. Um, I grew up on the uh, reservation my entire life, and I I love you know seeing everyone around that's just like me, and uh, it's it's really amazing. But at the same time, you're you're stuck in this mentality that everybody thinks the way you do, or looks the way you do, or um, you you feel safe, but you need to get uncomfortable. You need to be in a situation where you can understand somebody else. Um, from different perspectives, we need to be able to open our minds up and open our hearts up and not to be stuck in our specific way thinking that, oh, this is the only way. And I think going to Fresh Tracks, that has done um, so many great things for me. Uh, you, you meet uh, people from all over the place, and they have different experiences, different backgrounds um, than you do. And then you get to share it with each other and say, hey, this is the way I did this, and um, this is the way you're doing that. How can we uh, collaborate, or how can we um, 
what's the best way we can go about doing something. It's always about finding a way to make sure that we're all excelling and it's not just um, I'm just focusing on th these issues for these peoples or um, it's about all of us together and finding that common ground where we can all uplift each other. And I think Fresh Tracks has done an amazing job in doing that for us. So Anthony, uh, one of the things uh, that I've been learning about is how critical and important a connection to the land uh, and a connection to nature is to tribal and indigenous communities. And you are doing some of that in the, in the urban community in Chicago. So can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, so uh, most recently uh, what happened in, in, in the city uh, is uh, the youth council that I'm a part of, Shy Nations, uh, in partnership with the American Indian Center um, and Alderman Carlos Ramirez Rosa, uh, got together, uh, put together a proposal, and we got our first um, city-owned plot of land. Uh, so it's the first time something like this has ever happened in the city of Chicago, uh, the city giving land that they own over to uh, the Native community. <clears throat> um, and that's, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I don't think the, uh, that that couldn't have been done without a lot of the youth in my community uh, that's constantly been pushing for a space like that. Um, and that's one, of, that's one of my drivers, is, is the youth back home. Um, and it's just, they inspire me. Uh, and they're the reason that I get to go across the country and do things like this. Um, but back to the space, that space is gonna be used as a native healing space. So, a space in the in the city of Chicago, uh, where natives can come and uh, you know just have a space to heal. Um, since we're such an we're an intertribal community, there's so many different tribes there. Uh, we're able to um, you know it's it's not just one culture uh, or one specific tribe's uh, teachings. It's it's several peoples, but it's also going to be used as a teaching space uh, for the Albany Park community uh, where it's located at. Um, uh, currently, right now, uh, we have uh, TP set up in the in the plot of land, um, and with me working at the alderman's office, uh, we've we've actually gotten a couple of calls, uh, uh, some concerned neighbors uh, asking about the encampment at the uh, plot of land, and um, it, at first it was just like, what? There's not an encampment there, um, but being able to uh, educate. Uh, the community that I'm from, because I live in Albany Park, um, and it's considered one of the most diverse neighborhoods in the country, uh, but that my neighborhood is still segregated, so on each block is a different group of people. Um, and just seeing the reactions that's coming from different these different people in my communities you know, has, has been pretty positive because um, before we our youth council would go out and you know we would tap maple trees, we would still, uh, take part in our culture uh, because a lot of the times people don't think that uh, you, with you living in a city, you don't have access to uh, the outdoors at all. And um, with me living in the Chicago, I live right down the street from the Forest Preserve, so I have plenty of access uh, to the outdoors. You know, I have a parkway that I can go to. Um, these plants that the city grows for decorations, they're still my relatives. I still have a connection with them. Um, and to maintain that connection in, in the city is um, uh, it's powerful, it's uplifting, it's, um, it's a way for me to stay connected to my culture, but also not feel so alone in a place where you know, you're usually the only Native kid uh, in your classroom. Oh, thank you, Anthony. Kyra, one of my favorite memories of 2018 was you and I being back home in our tribal community and digging water potatoes uh, in the base of their mountains, just like our ancestors did. It was a very special time. My question is similar to Anthony's. Can you share the importance of place and the role that Fresh Tracks has within, I guess, this important ideology? Um, so yeah, I think that one thing that we take it for granted all the time is the earth that we love, live on. Um, we, we don't realize that it has given us food to survive for many years. It has given us plants we use for medicine. It has given us everything that we need that was necessary to live. Um, we had housing from the trees. We had food from the roots we dug. And we didn't need more than that. And I think that 
throughout time, we started getting attached to materialistic things. And though this is not always bad, we tend to overlook all of the things that nature gave us in the first place. And um, we need to not be forgetful of that. And I think it's so amazing when we get to go back to our homelands and we still get to dig roots like our ancestors did. We, um, we were taught that. And it's so exciting that we get to continue to plant those so that the next generation can do, can do the same thing. And I think that we need to make sure that we are staying connected with um, our lands because ultimately it is ourselves. My grandma told me when I was younger, she's like, don't ever pick up a rock from the ground unless you ask the creator first. Make sure you're blessing that rock. Make sure that you're, you're saying a prayer because that's where it lives, that's where it's at. So before you pick anything up or just throw it or um, if you're going to uh, make something there and you're clearing out the space, make sure you're blessing that space first because that is its home. And it has stuck with me and throughout Fresh Tracks, it's amazing going somewhere and being in a beautiful space, like we didn't have internet service and I loved that <laughs> because I got to have amazing conversations with people and I got to know people on a level that I, I don't think I would have had we had phones like in our break times. Instead, we talked to each other and I got to learn about um, someone who I didn't realize uh, she hadn't got to go to college. Um, and some people would just think about all these reasons right off the bat of why didn't she, didn't, she didn't get a go. But she had gotten the opportunity, but she had to take care of her sister. And she wanted to make sure that her sister could go to college. And so she gave up that opportunity. Um, so it was like selflessness. And so you get to learn a lot more about people on a deeper level. And uh, nature allows that to happen. And I think it's so amazing. Thank you, Kira. Uh, Karina, uh, you describe yourself as a country girl, and, and I love that you got chickens. Uh, so how, how does that connection with the land and, and nature, um, how is that important to our communities? And how has that idea grown for you during Fresh Tracks? Well, I think it's important for neighborhoods to connect to the land and to the outdoors. It brings people to be present, to share ideas, and to build conversations and connections. And I say neighborhoods instead of communities because <coughs> just because it's a neighborhood doesn't mean it's a community. And the outdoors, it's like a framework to build a community. Back at home, we have a multi-year partnership with the National League of Cities and Children in Nature Network where we're working on connecting cities to nature. And we're using Plaster Creek Park as a pilot to really bring the community in because the park is not active. The community would rather go a couple blocks away to a different park when they already have this park and they're not using it. So we worked with, or I worked with, uh, fifth graders, Burton Elementary fifth graders, and we did a park audit. We made a community events. They did interviews to family, friends, and community members on why they weren't using the park, and if they were, what were they using? And we found some very interesting information and a lot of amazing ideas that we incorporated in the redesign. So they have a sense of ownership over the park before it's even redone or redesigned. And they got Nash, or local attention from uh, <laughs> newspaper articles and news channels, and they got national attention from Apple because they used their iPads to create a little movie trailer on the park. Now, it was not only has the idea of being connected to the land and the outdoors grown since Fresh Tracks, but it was ignited during Fresh Tracks. It made me realize, again, how much I was taking for granted and all of the information that I learned from different cultures. And it just, I felt a sense of belonging in the Train the Trainer Summit in 2017 when I first joined into Fresh Tracks. And I have a Fresh Tracks familia that I keep track and I keep in contact with and it's growing since I've every single chance that I get or every event that I'm invited to. <laughs> yeah. 
So Karina, you were part of the Train the Trainer program. Yes. You've served in several capacities with Fresh Tracks. Can you explain the importance of mentorship and leadership as it pertains to Fresh Tracks? Yes. So every young person is a leader. They just need connections, support, guidance, and just some ideas or inspiration. Or and it's they push you, they engage you into learning new ideas, into meeting new community leaders. They really enhance your knowledge and skills into your work. I think it's really important to be a mentor and a leader because I myself have a chance to make a change in a young person's life. Thanks, Karina. Uh, Anthony, so you get to work for your alderman in, uh, in Chicago. And uh, a couple of the things that we work towards here at Fresh Tracks is civic engagement and community action. How have some of those played a role in your everyday work life? Um, so, uh, you know, working for my alderman, so when it, I, I actually work for my alderman, he is my uh, city councilman, he represents my uh, ward. Um, <clears throat> so it's, I, I'm, I'm very much invested uh, in, in my community and seeing people uh, in my neighborhood uh, be, uh, succeed and uh, I like it when you know they're traveling or when they're going across the country and they're speaking on panels it's something that makes uh, uh, me really happy and I can you know I can bridge fresh tracks and working at the office um, because it's it's very much about being invested in your community and seeing people uh, thrive uh, I'm able to use the the positions that I'm in, uh, you know, to up uplift youth in my community, um, you know, because a lot of the times we have uh, different orgs, you know, they're uplifting youth, which is great, um, but they're not lifting up every youth, and I think that's something that we need to do. So, you know, as a youth who's uh, given a spotlight, instead of shining that spotlight on myself, I like to, you know, shine it on. Uh, the youth in my community. So the youth that got that plot of land, um, uh, Adrian, Eli, Naomi, uh, Winfield, those are all youth in my community that it took them two years to get that plot of land and that's because um, they were invested into the work, they were invested into their community, um, but they were also invested in, uh, into each other as well. Um, I think it's important to note that when we're working with each other, it very much uh, starts to become your second family. Uh, like yesterday, I know uh, Karina came to my door and knocked and I opened it and I was like, oh my goodness. And I was so happy to see her because um, it was, it's been a couple months since I've seen her last, but it's because we have that sense of family, that sense of community, uh, that sense of community building with each other uh, that I think is uh, so important to each and every one of our community. Thank you, Anthony. Devin, your work connecting the Massachusetts State Representative and communities is something to be really proud of. You've used your community action plan to give back to young adults and peers in a very meaningful way. Can you share more about the power in community organizing and what it means to connect community together? So for me, a lot of the work that I do is um, heavily based on you know constituent services, connecting with my neighborhoods, connecting with the neighborhood I grew up in. Um, and for a while, I wasn't, I, you know, I used to look at myself as a sore, you know, a bad apple to my community. Um, I used to take away from a lot, you know, between violence, drugs, all of that. And now I'm in a better position to actually impact my community, bring their voice to the state house through legislation, hear what they need. And a lot of the times I hear is, I need housing, I need a job, um, I need these opportunities to, you know, to, to arise, I need funding. Um, and, and in doing so, hearing that, I make sure I carry their voice to the state house every step, you know, every day with me. Um, whether it's I start in the community, end the community, I'm in the community every day to ensure that I can be the best advocate for them on a state level, um, whether it's legislation, whether it's attending community meetings, whether it's you know, talking to cities, um, local cities and local municipalities to ensure that they're doing the most they can for my community and uh, making sure that they have the funding so they can provide for those organizations that are strengthening you know, boys and young men of color like myself, um, you know, educational, um, educational workshops, um, community centers, making sure that they can continue to thrive because for a lot of 
for my life, that, that's what I was, you know, based on. Community centers, going to community centers, the Boys and Girls Club, you know, hanging at the Boys and Girls Club until my mom got out of work. Um, if, if I wasn't there, I was in the, you know, in the community getting into trouble, so my mom would want me to be at the Boys and Girls Club doing extracurricular activities rather than getting in trouble. Um, but for me, the power in community and the power of community organizing in itself is crucial. It, it, it's nothing better to be able to know what my community wants, um, being able to hear their voice, bring that voice to my boss, and ultimately he delivers that across the table. Um, and, and you know, a lot of the things that I do as well is mentor. You know, uh, for a lot of my time I've been mentored. You know, mentorship comes in levels. You know, we're gonna have older folks that are gonna mentor us, and we have younger folks that we can mentor. Um, and what that looks like for me is professional development days for youth in you know, high school, youth in middle schools, going back to these schools and talking about them, telling them my story, telling them where I've been at and telling them where I'm at now. Um, that in itself is beautiful. I had the opportunity to host a professional development day with the city of Boston. And um, Fresh Track supported me by being able to um, cater to 150 youth and have them fed well, um, not just any you know, not unhealthy food, some food, healthy food options. Um, so we did that. We had a professional development day where I taught about 100 males. I even taught some, some mothers, you know, some sisters to just learn how to tie a tie. Um, I had folks that were in college, freshman year, that didn't know how to tie a tie. That in itself was surprising for me. Um, and me being somebody who knows how to tie a tie, why not pass that on? Um, we had headshots. Um, we had, you know, resume building. We had, you know, literally, we'll sit you down and apply with jobs, summer jobs with you. Um, just that in itself is more, you know, it's giving back for me. And if I do that and folks continue to do that consistently, it, it'll create a wave of change, positive change. Thanks, Devin. Kira, uh, you are really an inspiration because part of your community action after Fresh Tracks was to go back home and build up a team and do something extraordinary, uh, which is to get the city of Pullman to change Columbus Day to Indigenous Day. So Woo! round of applause for that. Uh, so you are an inspiration. Can you walk us through what it takes to that, get that kind of change, and, and how did any of our support in Fresh Tracks help you get there? Yeah, um, so it really was uh, the community at WSU who really came together and decided that this uh, needed to happen, this change needed to happen and you really need to have this passion and to be driven and to get people that are really ready to share their voice even when their voice is going to shake and you're scared and you don't know how people are going to react and um, yeah we had an amazing an amazing team and an amazing advisor who uh, was with us every step of the way um, wrote up a thing. We got all of the presidents of all the Native American clubs to sign off on it. We bugged people nonstop and um, brought it to the city of Pullman where we stood or we uh, sat in like three hour sessions so they can go all the way through everything else before they got to ours. And then afterwards, um, we still sat there so that we could shake their hands afterwards um, to like just to be respectful and be like, thank you that you're actually like, you're bringing this up, that this is, uh, you're telling us that this is important to you. And, um, and so we got it on the, um, on their list of things to do. And so we had to come back another day where they were gonna vote on it. And so again, the community came together, the Native American community and other uh, allies all came together. We sat in the, um, in the meeting and again it was hours long until it came to that point and it passed and everybody was excited and, <laughs> and there was like war hoopy and I don't know if we scared anybody <laughs> but it was literally it was such an amazing moment um, and again we stayed until the entire meeting was done and shook their hands and um, it was such an amazing thing and not only did we get it passed in the uh, city of Pullman, but we also got it passed on the campus of WSU. And um, not only on just WSU's main campus, but all uh, Washington State University campuses. And so it was um, a big win for our entire uh, community. But I think one of the biggest things um, for us being able to do that was uh, a group of us went over to Fresh Tracks and we learned about telling our story and um, it, I didn't realize how hard it was to do that. Like when they asked you, like, who are you? And I thought I knew, <laughs> but going to the conference, 
it really brings a lot out of you. It, it asks you to tell um, a lot more than you, you thought you knew you could. And um, I didn't know if I was going to share this, but um, Dr. Shoni Little, you did a presentation um, in your presentation, it was just amazing to see like a woman of color up there and knowing that I could be in that place, knowing that it's possible. And one thing that you were talking about too was um, beauty and how young kids are fed at a young age that there's this I idea of what beauty is supposed to be. And when I was uh, younger, um, I always wanted to be lighter. I always wanted to, my skin to be lighter and I would try to stay out of the sun sometimes and I didn't tell anybody this. And um, I grew up and I still had like some of that left inside of me. I still had some of those ideas but I kind of suppressed them. And going to this conference was really healing because it allowed me to acknowledge that this was a thing and that I wasn't the only one going through it. And it's sad to think that there's young people who have that mindset and are um, feeling that way too. And I grew to like love the color of my skin. I love who I am and the skin that I am in. And my, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I love who I am. And I never, I didn't realize I never healed from that as a kid. And when I went and you spoke and I sat there and I cried and I just wanted to say thank you for that. Um, it really just meant so much and it all just ties in because what I really got from the conference is that you need to tell your story and that isn't a part of my story that I was proud of but it is a part of my story and it has helped me grow and be proud of who I am and speak from my voice and it really just ties into that you need to be able to feel comfortable with who you are, love yourself, and make sure that even if you're scared, use your voice, make sure you're talking, even when it's shaking, even when you're crying, and because ultimately you need to tell your story. Because if you don't, you're leaving that window open for somebody else to tell your story. And it's not gonna come out the way that it should from you, from your heart. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kyra. That got me emotional, too. <clears throat> Kyra and I are not only from the same community, she's also my relative. I call her my um, tzitzit, which means little sister. So I'm just really, really proud of you, Kyra. Thank you very much. So to kind of close this out, um, I'm going to ask this as a group question. Fresh Tracks believes that connecting to the outdoors cultural exchange and youth leaderships are steps to addressing inequity. Why do you believe this is so important? Uh, I guess I can start. Um, one thing that I, uh, that I really enjoy about Fresh Tracks um, is that it's not coming from a deficit perspective. You know, we have, we constantly have these different uh, nonprofits or uh, different groups coming at uh, different groups of youth saying, oh, poor pitiful you. Um, and that's not what Fresh Tracks is doing. You know, uh, Fresh Tracks is, I think it's empowering uh, communities of color um, and, and communities across the board uh, to get up and to do things in your community um, to you know, address the issues. Yes, my community has this, this, and this wrong with it, um, but how can we fix that instead of just saying, uh, well, here's a bunch of money, fix it on yourself. You know, it's coming together, uh, you know, with youth up here and, and brainstorming different ideas on how to tackle these issues um, in our communities. Because like I said, what, what's happening in Chicago could very much well be happening in Washington or Michigan or Boston. And you know, they may have already solved the issue in their communities and we're just behind. Um, so being able to connect with them uh, and, and again, like sharing your story and, and, and sharing you know, these issues uh, is, you know, it helps you grow as a person, um, 
I think it's, it's helping you, uh, it's teaching you how to uh, take criticism and it's teaching you how to um, work with other people who aren't necessarily from your communities because, um, you know, the truth is when we, when after this panel, you know, we're all going to go home uh, to our communities uh, and, you know, we're going to stay in those communities. Um, and, you know, that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to be part of that community, but to be able to come out of our shells and share our culture and, um, you know, share, share, share with the world, uh, you know, the things that we're doing um, is important. I think going off of yours, um, these components really build a bridge to conversations and connections. And Fresh Tracks convened 120 young leaders over the four trainings. That's 104, or 120 young leaders that will go back home and be spreading what they were taught. They will allow more young leaders to come up in their communities and it will really allow us to create change, to stand up and voice our opinions um, no matter how hard it may be. I, I would say for me, Fresh Tracks um, incorporating these components and making these connections in itself is life changing, um, barrier breaking. As I said, it 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 goes on a, a domino effect kind of. You know, I'm connected to her, to my brother, to my sister, to these lovely moderators. Um, <laughs> and, and and in that being so, I have more opportunity arise, connections. As she, as they said, you know, I can be going through the same thing at home. She can be going through the same thing at home. And we would never know. But when we all come together, you put that on the table, we can have a collective impact and a collective approach to what we're individually experiencing. And that goes a long way. Yeah, I think I agree with them. I think connection is a huge thing. We all are um, seeming to come from very different backgrounds. But yes, yet we are oppressed by like, the same system. And so to be able to connect with one another and say, hey, I'm going through this. Do you know somebody that can help me? Um, and uh, actually, uh, I had that happen. We were doing, um, our club is doing a, um, an event for missing and murdered indigenous women. And I had met someone at Fresh Tracks. And she was like, hey, I know the person that did the database for it. Like, I can connect you to her. And so she can talk to you and give you more information. And I thought that was amazing because I'm like, OK, yes, please, can I, can I get in contact with her? And I got a hold of her, and we've been communicating back and forth. But just given these opportunities and being able to tackle them together and realize that there is a bigger issue, there is um, these things that we can talk to with one another, and realizing that there's other young leaders out there who are doing the same thing as you're doing, and so that you know you're not alone. You know that, that it is possible because you see the amazing things that these people are doing. and um, fresh tracks really it gives you the support that you that you needed because sometimes it can feel like you're coming from it um, alone when you're somewhere else or you're like far out on the reservation and you don't think anybody's listening to you. You have a place like this where you can come and there's people that really care and they're asking and they're they're contacting you af contacting you afterward and saying hey like do you need help with anything like. Um, it really builds that support system and it helps you grow as a, a youth leader. I, I did want to add one more thing. Um, and it's, you know, I think it's important that it's, it's changing the narrative uh, that, you know, youth, like young people of color are allowed to be outside. Just like, um, just like the white community is allowed to be outside. We're allowed to experience these things. Just like anybody else, you know, we're allowed to go kayaking, we're allowed to go hiking, um, and changing the narrative on that, and and making it uh, acceptable for us to do these things um, because we're already doing them. We've been doing them. So, so for me, oh, go for it. I'm just gonna <laughs> add one more thing before we move on. So for me, I just want to kind of put it in perspective for you all. Um, I, I would never forget this day. Um, we were, I believe, we we're in Aspen. Um, for a conference, for a training. Um, you all heard Trenton's name come up already, and I'm going to say his name again. Um, a brother of mine, Trenton, who I hold dearly in my heart, um, was having a difficult time at the conference. 
Um, he's from South Dakota. At the time in South Dakota, there was you know, his tribe and his reservation that were going through some pipeline, and oil pipeline, um, reconstruction, and something of that nature. Um, but we found ourselves in a room. And in, in the room, um, the room was named in honor of the Koch brothers. Um, and he was just rubbed the wrong way because for him to know that he was sitting in a room funded by the Koch brothers, Koch brothers, if I'm saying their name right or wrong, um, but yeah. And he was also aware that they were leading the construction pipeline process in South Dakota that can damage the water in which he's been drinking for his, all his life. Um, that in itself, just seeing him emotionally wrecked, you know, rubbed off on me. Um, I later went home to Boston, you know, thinking everything was gravy and I got good water. And then I see something in the news about two or three months later, pipeline. South Dakota. It, I think it, it bursted. Something happened, it, it, you know, in which he was in strong opposition to. Um, but when I seen that news, I felt for him. I felt as though I was from South Dakota. I felt like my my tribe was being taken over. I felt like my water supply was being damaged. And, and that in itself, being able to to realize the, the the family extension, the emotional connection to it. To this day, you know, I feel a lot of indifferences about it, and um, I just try to make sure that my brother Trenton knows that I'm there for him every step of the way, um, despite things like this happening. Thank you, Devin. So 2018 serves, uh, I mean, uh, today serves as a day to celebrate and look back at 2018, uh, to celebrate your voices, your action, and the voices and actions of other leaders who couldn't be here with us today, you heard. 120, 200 over the last two years, uh, leaders that we've trained with partners like um, Opportunity Youth United, OIIF, and, and uh, all, all the partners that come into play. So shout out to the leaders who are out there uh, watching us through the live stream right now. Know that we got you. Um, and currently right now, just to wrap it up, we're, we're in the community ac action phase of our, of our initiative. So one of the things that we always say at the training is that the, the work doesn't stop at the training. It actually keeps going and the action continues. So we've established what we call the Fresh Tracks Community Action Fund. Um, every one of the leaders that goes through our Fresh Tracks training receives micro grants to activate their community action, uh, along with mentorship, webinars, and, and support as much as we can. And, and what we always say to these young leaders is that we're not invested in them for a year or two or three. We're invested in them for a lifetime. And at the end of the day, that's what it's going to take for us to, to get this done. Uh, it's, a, it's a family affair. So uh, I invite you all to join our family uh, and come out and, and uh, join us for the next Fresh Tracks uh, training. So with that, I'll turn it over to Eric. And uh, as you heard, uh, Dr. Sharani Little, uh, we it has a lot of heart and soul, but she is a brain to be reckoned with too. Uh, and, and and I learn from her every day uh, and every time that I get to share some time and space with her. So she's going to highlight some of the evaluation in, outcomes while we take a seat. In two minutes, I'm going to do this. They do this to me all the time. I'm either before lunch, before dinner, but evaluation is happening. And I know time is of the essence. And so I'm not really going to keep you. We, we have full on documents. I'm going to just kind of go through this. But really, the evaluation needs no uh, discussion or validation. This was your validation. We definitely have clear metrics. We have a very specific logic model. We have a specific foci. We have evaluation questions for those who will recognize my language, my, my, my other family who understands all of those pieces. But most importantly, um, the power of narrative. And as I got involved with this program three years ago, blessed to be part of this program, um, three years ago. I'm a faculty member. I'm a consultant, but I'm born and raised in Compton, California. When I heard about the chickens, I live in an area called Richland Farms in Compton with chickens and horses. And so understanding the narrative and recrafting that is so important to me. I'm the mother of twin sons who were also born and raised in, in Compton. So I understand the impact of being segregated, born to a single mom, I am a single mom. So for me, this was not just professional. This started as personal and hard work continues to be. 
and I think you can see with the integration of this program, the evaluation took definitely a traditional mode. It was also very ethnographic. Um, it wasn't intentional at first, the first year that I would be sleeping in the Arctic Village and that I would be, you know, being in a circle and, and some of the, the kids, and I tell them, when you see me um, in public, pretend I've always looked this cute cute girl. Uh, but being in the outdoors, it's, it's, it has inspired me as well around health and wellness. And so um, when they see me now, they're like, Professor Little, what's going on? I'm like, I'm getting cute like you guys. So very quickly, just I just want you to know that we really took a holistic approach to the evaluation, both the program itself in terms of being very intentional about the curriculum. As you have heard, the integration of cultural excellence, cultural humility, cultural competency, as well as this connectedness to civic engagement and involving that around leadership is a very distinctive model, as you have heard, and as we've all supported um, very important youth development. That integration is very important and not easy to achieve, let me just be honest, because when you talk about cultural competency, you can approach it as, here's the reservoir, let us fill you up, but these young people had to experience it. You had to create authentic experiences, experiential, over a pretty much short period of time. But as you heard in the stories, it was done as they were talking about community organizing from a curricular perspective. So they were talking about the power of their personal narrative, even when it gets difficult. But all the dots begin to connect around this goal of community action that is generated at the space, but we really understand the breadth of this. And I would encourage you, all of you, to look at the webinars that have taken place since these, especially one, again, very similar outcomes around bringing about change in their environment at universities, broad change. We've been here for hundreds of years. As a professor, I have integrated in my courses knowledge that I've learned from these young people. And it's very imperative that when we look at the outcomes, we connect it specifically to this growth. So whether it be around cultural competence, and we have clear metrics where it was really almost off the charts, where uh, young people understood that other people were writing their narratives, but they were given the tools to say why certain things mattered, how their experience was the evidence and the data of their leadership, their empathy. We also looked at very specifically understanding leadership styles, because you can encourage people to be in collaboration and in community, but we very seldom equip them with the tools to actually navigate that process. And so this is what Fresh Tracks has done from a ground level and continues to do. When we look at the sense of civic engagement and enacting in ways in which to tell stories but also listen to others, to advocate, advocate in a particular way, um, Sonny, one of the other youth leaders, he recognized from Fresh Tracks, he stated that when he had to go to multiple audiences, it required multiple strategies. And so sometimes people who were not in agreement with what he was initially advocating for, he couldn't just go in sometimes and say, I'm going to push down the door, but he had to build relationship, something that he had not only cultivated at Fresh Track, but had experienced. And so one of the things we wanted to do by triangulating was looking at traditional quantitative surveys we devised using some evidence-based um, surveys around self-esteem, around civic engagement, and then we created some other um, indicators, but we also looked at focus groups. We did qualitative um, individual interviews. Uh, as I said, ethnographically, we were there for observations, and it really did show, and I'm kind of talking through the methodology, but we have all of the instruments, all of the tools available, um, if you will like to see those, and we are completing a very comprehensive um, overall evaluation report. Um, that takes into place all of these things. Um, in terms of even scaling, I just want to highlight this. Even on our quantitative instruments, we uh, switched up the scales. Don't watch. You guys don't listen. Put your ears, your fingers in your ears. But we wanted to make sure it wasn't just, oh, we all strongly agree, we all strongly disagree. So we had another layer of validation. So when we inverted the Likert scale, we still had these great outcomes. And I don't know if I went, okay, so we see some of these uh, core areas, the power of personal story, and we have the numbers here, you can't really see them, but major shift, major growth, how to create a community action plan. Again, as adults, we talk about change. These young people get the scaffold. 
they get the tools, they begin the building. Um, and if we're as adults recognize, sometimes we try to fly the plane while it's in, in air, but these young people really were intentional about doing that. The outdoors, the final indicator, and then I'm going to be done, was this importance of the outdoors and connecting it to mental and physical health. Because even though as they were talking about their story and issues of trauma came up and issues of understanding community and community trauma, they understood that the healing that was taking place in the outdoors was not only very intentional, but it created a space for them to advocate on behalf of their broader communities. And that is something, again, that is distinctive. And when you look at it aggregated, you begin to see how this model unfolds. And so that's very important. As I've already said, there are some really key findings that we reiterated around identity, around narrative, around critical uh, cultural exchange and communication. Um, the implications are clear. I think you all see that with real investment and a strategic model with reinforcement and continued effort, we get the great outcomes that we've experienced today. Thank you. Thank you, Sharani, and um, I'm, I'm really um, sorry that um, Sharani had to be so brief, but you saw just from that snapshot what an unbelievable partner she is. Um, I just have to say, I've met a lot of evaluators in my life. Sh Sharani goes to a whole other level. It's way beyond evaluation. We, we call her Mama Sharani on the trainings. Um, she's out there hassling our youth leaders to fill out their surveys at the campfire. She is talking to them about how this actually uh, works into improving these programs. And one of the things I'm really pumped about with the future of this program is Shirani is there working with our youth leaders and will be building lots of new avenues for them to actually be learning about why this is so important to know um, how we can build this strategy. And so I, um, I definitely um, hope that you can connect with her afterwards too. We are five minutes over, but I hope you all see why, um, because we wanted to give you a full snapshot of really why we do this work. Um, I carry these, these moments with me in everything I do every day, and I know our teams do too, because um, these young leaders are really who we're here to serve. So uh, we um, are excited to um, open this up to a reception afterwards. So we thought, you know, it, it, there's a lot here, so we really hope you can just connect with our youth leaders, with our evaluator, with all of our program partners, and have lots of conversations. So I just encourage you to, to go out and get to know us uh, um, through conversation, and thank you so much for joining us today.